Hi everyone, welcome to a doubles tutorial, how to avoid the 10 most common mistakes in doubles. So let's get started. First biggest mistake that I'm seeing is the wrong position when your partner is serving. So where you wanna be is, you want to be in the middle of the box from these two dimensions. And I wanna say about three fourths from the net to the service line. What I'm seeing a lot is, and that could be that people are fearing that they get a hit in the head uh, when their partner is not the most accurate server, but they're standing out here. So what that does is I'm not putting any pressure on my opposite returner. So that is my number one job. I wanna make myself big here. I wanna be a presence up at net. So again, in the middle from these two, and about three-fourths from the net to the service line. And I'll explain to you why. In a so the reason why I want you to be three-fourths from the net to the service line is because you have the opportunity to move forward on your volleys. Should you be poaching, then you can move diagonally up towards the center strap. If you're too close, it feels like I can only turn sideways. And that's not really giving me any pop on the ball. The second thing that I'm seeing a lot is, and I don't know where that came from, is that people measure the distance with the racket here. To my mind, you're way too close here. You're way too easy to lob because that is the number one tool that a lot of players use anyways uh, to play people when they're up at net. So you basically invite them and you're not giving them any really hard ball to play because right now a ball that bounces just past the service line almost beats me. Um, the third reason why I don't wanna be that close, third reason why I wanna be on about three fourths is if somebody tees off on me, here I have some reaction time. If you're world class, yes, you see that. They're hugging the net like crazy but they're world class for a reason. They have fantastic reflexes. So as, as mere mortals, you just have that much more time here to react. So three fourths from the net to the service line and about halfway in. Second mistake that I see is that people stand in a very passive and not very effective position when their partner is returning. So I'm on the ad side here, my partner is behind me, returning from the deuce court, and a lot of times I see people standing in here. So what we have to consider is that across from me here, I have a person that might poach on a weak return, and their easiest volley is straight between us. That is why the one back one up position is the most vulnerable, because it has a space of all of Montana open in the middle. So ideally where I wanna be is towards the back of the box, towards the center. And I can slide over a little bit depending on how good of a reaction I have because now I have a play on that middle ball. If I'm standing out here, I'm kinda of inviting you to hit straight through the middle even on not a great poach. So again, my number one job though is I can help my partner make the call. So the rules do not say that it's just the returner who can call the ball. So make sure you have your eyes here. You don't wanna be squared up like that. You're not the line judge. That's just part of your job. You wanna be squared up to your potential poacher, just like a goalie, right? My shoulders, my hip, my toes, my knees are squared up. I'm in a ready position. So I glance down, job number one. Job number two is my eyes go to my opposite net player because they can poach. And again, the easiest volley is right through the center. So I wanna take that away with just one movement. You see that world class? They're standing somewhere in here. But again, they're world class because they have unbelievable movement and unbelievable reaction. So mere mortals, here's a good place to be. But you're not done yet. One, make the call. Two, eyes on my opposite net player and only once the ball is past my opposite net player, that's when I move forward and challenge the server. That's when I come forward 
found, and that's when I'm looking for a poach. So make sure that you have that sequence because if you move forward and the person poaches, either you get a hit or you have no chance to play defense. So as the ball is by the net player, I'm moving forward. So when I'm the server, where do I want to stand? Especially singles players kind of forget that, that they are now having to cover half of the court. So about here is pretty good. There's a little bit more of a preference if you really, really heavily favor your forehand, sneak in a little bit to expose the forehand a little bit, but you do have to be aware that a good short cross court ball will probably get you. So on the deuce court, I would suggest to stand about here. On the ad side, a little bit of a different matter. Now when I'm the server from the ad side and I favor my forehand, which a lot of players do, a lot of rec players do, sneak out a little bit, that's perfectly fine. You can serve from here and then even recover out here a little bit more because every cross court ball will travel into your strike zone. And if your partner, even if they're not poaching, is doing an okay job to literally just reach out with their racket and cutting balls through the middle off, you should not be passed or caught through the middle on a rally ball from the baseline. Volleys, again, a little differently because you have less time, but you can absolutely serve from here and then find your balance here so you favor your forehand and hopefully use your forehand to be aggressive and look for a ball to come in. All right, so the fourth mistake that I'm seeing is that a lot of players poach on anything that's yellow and that's flying. And that is what you don't want to do, especially as a newer player. I want you to wait a little bit more for good opportunities. And here are the good opportunities. I need to have my baseline player put Aaron under pressure. And my player does that best if they go straight through the center of the half and ideally jam him or make him stretched or in any kind of way get him off balance. So what I don't want to do is I don't want to poach when the ball is short because Aaron can tee off on that ball and I have no play on that. I also want to be careful on poaching on a ball where my opponent is being pulled out wide because that opens my line. So if Aaron is being pulled out there, I kind of shot myself in the foot here. So I do want to go when my opponent there is off balance. So I need to be a little more proactive looking at what my opponent, what my partner's ball does to my opponent. So where do I poach when I get the ball? But now that I'm seeing that my opposite baseline player is in trouble, I'm getting a juicy ball, where do I want to place it? Ideally, what I want to do is, I kind of put up uh, cones there. That's my opposite net player. And then, of course, I have Aaron at the baseline. Where I want to go is, I want to go between them. Right? What I don't necessarily want to do, or not at all, is moving into this direction and then volley behind me, because, of course, that's a gimme. If I, the other thing that I do not necessarily want to do, I don't teach it, but I hear it a lot, is with the poach, going right at the feet of the person when I have all of Montana open in the middle. Because here, I might make a get, and I might make a very lucky get, and I'll get another ball here and may miss that. So go right through the center, because that is the most vulnerable spot that you have. The other time that I don't want to poach is when my partner is already up at net. Because a ball that moves cross court Actually, Aaron, if you move back a little bit further, let's say you just transitioned in from the baseline, right? My partner just came in, the ball hangs here. I'm either gonna run straight into Aaron or I'm taking a ball that's his. The other thing is if they see that I'm poaching and they go behind me, Aaron has no chance to have my back because he's already coming in. So I would just quit poaching or trying to look for a poach once we've both established net position. All right, mistake number five, number five, is going down the line when it's not appropriate, 
right? So let's imagine again, I'm here back at the baseline. Aaron is my opposite net player. He's actually a great volleyer and my partner's up at net. If I'm going down the line when it's not the right time, which is to my mind and the way that I played it and was very successful with that is when I'm behind the baseline or when I'm being pulled out wide. If I have a good net player opposite of me, if I'm being pulled out wide and my opponent is not sliding out with me, you can go down the line. But at a higher level, that's kind of like a taunt. They slide out and they volley through the middle. And here's why I don't want to go down the line when I'm in a passive position. So let's say I'm back here. Adam is just going to do that. And I have no chance to pass him from here. Now, when do I want to go down the line? There are instances, of course, when I do. And they are, let's say, on a weaker second serve and the ball sits up. I'm going to tee off on Aaron just to let him know that I have that shot. If the ball is a little shorter and I'm standing in here, again, I can be aggressive. I can go down the line. The other time I'm going down the line, if somebody taught me basically in the warm-up that they don't want to volley, I will go and expose that. But again, at a higher level, if I see that dude over there, I'm not going to go down the line unless I'm fully on balance and I can almost hit down on the ball. Another mistake that I'm seeing is that people come in, come hell, come high water, I think is the expression. They heard that you play doubles at net, which of course, when we have both up at net, is our most aggressive position. You can hit angles, you can hit down on the line. Ideally, you do want to come in, but you want to come in on the right balls. So if I'm coming in on the wrong balls, I'm even going behind the camera because that means that I'm way behind the baseline. I'm coming in. Aaron is going to just get the ball down to my feet. And nobody's going to volley really well when they have to volley up. So ideally, I want to get a ball that bounces short. As a rule of thumb, try to have both feet inside the baseline to gain a first volley position, which is about one or two yards inside the service line. Is that one or two yards? Well, it's about a meter and a half. I'm still going in meters. So hopefully, Aaron then has more trouble. So I'm coming in on the proper ball. I'm hitting it deeper. Now I have a little bit of a more aggressive play on that. So ideally, try not to rush into net if you don't have the proper play. Right. Another mistake that I'm seeing is People do come in with the right ball, but then they neglect to cover the ball properly, to cover the net properly. So here's uh, my coaches back in the day called it the Pac-Man move. So I'm coming in, I'm going cross court, and I'm following the ball up straight. And then I cut in here, and then I move towards the middle. So that's the Pac-Man move. Ideally, what you want to do is, imagine that the ball is connected to you with a string, let that ball pull you in. So you're going as the crow flies, you're covering more of the middle. It will feel that the higher part of the net is exposed, but that's what you want. You want to ta taunt them to hit over the higher part of the net. So I'm attacking, I'm coming in, I got the middle. If he passes me there with a little dink angle, if I hit an okay approach, I will ask him to do it again by hitting the same approach. But I definitely do want to take the middle away from them. Mistake number eight, immediately lobbing when there's no reason to. So a lot of players, especially newer players, are not as comfortable coming to net. And they're not coming in close enough for you to lob, to warn the lob. They kind of hover around the service line. And to my mind, the better play is to go right to the feet. So Aaron is coming in. Of course, we imagine we have our net players in. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to dip the ball down to his feet. So ideally he misses it right away or my net player becomes more active. So if I throw up a lob immediately when somebody comes in and they're not coming in close enough, they have an easy overhead. So what I don't want to do is Aaron coming in I give them an overhead and he's going to tee off on my net player. So instead, what I'm trying to do first 
is I'm trying to go to Aaron's feet. So he's coming in, he's not coming in as quickly, and I go down to his feet. See, he has to volley the ball up. That was a really great volley, so I have a next ball, but I do have a next ball. That's the difference right there. If I hit an even better ball and he pops it up, my net player potentially can move through and intercept that ball. All right, another mistake that I'm seeing is, again, because people have heard, you have to come to net, you have to come to net, you have to come to net, is that if we get beat through the middle, because I'm not able to, let's say, return properly, let's say my opposite baseline player is the server, and I'm having issues returning, I go down the line, and poor Aaron here gets beat down the middle all day long. Instead of insisting on doing the same thing, what I'm just gonna ask Aaron is like, hey dude, come back with me. And we're playing two back. And you see that a ton now in pro tennis because the serves have gotten so dominant that it's really, really hard to um, actually return successfully. So what we've now done is, yes, we still have the middle, but whereas before Aaron got passed through the middle, and me of course, not just Aaron, um, because the ball is just too fast, now the ball sits right in his strike zone on the, on the backhand. Now, two back is a little bit more passive, but it is a lot better than being stubborn and getting beaten through the middle all the time. All right, mistake number 10 is going for too much on the serve. Now, in doubles and in singles also, you're not going to win matches by hitting aces. You're winning matches by not giving, giving your opponents too many looks on your second serve. You're winning matches by getting a high first serve percentage. And to do that is just take a little bit of pop off. Go with 85, 80% of what you can hit and try with that serve to get better placement and set up your net player, right? So when I'm serving and I'm hitting Mach 500, but I'm hitting one ace and 20 serves and the other 19 are second serves and I'm double faulting a bunch or they're just attacking the ball, take a little bit off, ideally place the ball a little bit more through the middle to take angles away. If you have better control of your serve, you can go for the body to jam people because again, that also takes angles away. But don't insist on hitting aces. Um, sometimes people get a little anxious and they just wanna get out of an uncomfortable position because they're not as familiar with doubles yet. That's what I'm seeing a lot. They just bomb for serves, but they're not holding serves because on a second serve, your net player as more or less a sitting duck, right? So you want first serves with an okay serve pace and placement so that your net player can become active and work on all the things that we talked on before.